Just a few news stories I thought were interesting. Um, well, that's rude. Didn't get the Tesla tweet. Anyway, um, Tesla stock fell by 12%, uh, which is probably because Musk tweeted that he's selling it. And Tesla's valuation is insane. It's valued more than all the other car companies in the world put together, even though they only have sales of 1% of all the cars. So, um, you know, Scott Galloway, an online stock commentator I listen to a lot, has been predicting for years that Tesla is going to fall and it rises. And he's sort of embarrassed that it rises when he says it's going to fall. But I tend to agree with him. The logic of the thing would say it's going to fall. Tesla seems wildly overvalued, although one thing about Tesla is it doesn't just make cars. It does a lot of other things, like he invested in cryptocurrency in a huge way and made a bunch of money on that. And now he moved to Texas to avoid California taxes and avoid California COVID restrictions. And the huge problem in Texas when he moved there is they had their power plants are terrible. And they had people die in this in the winter because their power plants aren't good enough. And so he immediately became an official energy provider and he's going to provide power to people in Texas. And so, you know, he, he's a very innovative guy and uh, keeps doing a lot more than just making cars, which perhaps explains that huge evaluation, which is not justified by the cars. But anyway, uh, it seems kind of clear that um, Elon Musk has figured out that Tesla is... Um, is falling. Oh, the guy I'm quoting is Scott Galloway. He uh, does podcasts, and he's now uh, on CNN. So there's the guy. Does many things. Uh, I'll put his Twitter feed in the comments. That's probably the way to go. He, he's, uh, he does two podcasts I listen to. He's an uh, economics and marketing professor at a New York college. And uh, he has a lot of those commenting on uh, the state of tech companies and uh, the stocks and the future and regulations and all that stuff. And so he's he's also very entertaining, so he makes it fun. I uh, know he likes cryptocurrency. I'm the one telling him he shouldn't be so bullish on cryptocurrency. He, he doesn't buy any, though. He doesn't invest in any cryptocurrency. But he says, uh, well, I think he's, maybe I'm in the same position he is. Cryptocurrencies don't make any sense at all. The whole, everything on the blockchain makes no sense at all. Uh, like NFTs, from a simple financial analysis, from the old world financial analysis, it makes no sense, but it's here and we're stuck with it, so we need to learn and live with it. Um, I'm very concerned about the crashing of the cryptocurrency market that's coming because of Tether, and I haven't been able to convince Scott to care about that, but he may someday. But um, anyway, cryptocurrency is certainly growing and getting bigger, um, and there's a ton of people boosting it, claiming it's going to solve every problem, and uh, Scott is less resistant to that than I am. I think because he's closer to the really important rich people. And important rich people are jumping into crypto at both feet. There's just people on the side who are not important or rich like me sniping at it. So, you know. The big players have definitely decided crypto is real. <laughs> so this is kind of crazy. You probably heard all the culture war Republican stuff where they say that uh, students in school are being taught that it's bad to be white because white people have done bad things in the past and you need to give them a patriotic education that white people are great and you shouldn't be ashamed of yourself. And so they invented this thing. I thought it was a joke. The University of Austin Alternative College, and they're going to have a class in like what a genius Joe Rogan is and stuff like that. So they've made a special college just for this purpose. Um, this reminds me of the Museum of the Creation that I think was also in Texas a few years ago, where they have a new natural history museum that says the earth was created in 4004 and Adam and Eve went with dinosaurs and it bases, you know, uh, ancient paleontology on their interpretation of the Bible and made a whole so-called science museum of it. So anyway, we'll see if that goes anywhere. You probably noticed Comcast went out last night. It sure affected me. Um, I was trying to teach a class starting at 1 this morning, and Comcast went out for a couple hours before that. It came back before my class, which is good. But anyway, apparently it was not just us. It was all over the nation. Comcast went down, and they haven't explained it at all. Their status page was down, so you couldn't see what was wrong. And now they said it was like a network issue or something. No information, no details. Um, but I'm amazed it hit all over the country. I thought it was just the rain here, but apparently it was something much bigger affecting the whole nation. <laughs> so it's hard to imagine what Comcast could have done <laughs> to trash their network over the whole nation. But it did come back here after about an hour. I was afraid from the gigantic amount of uh, people complaining that it was going to be out for a long time. This I thought was pretty interesting. A lot of people think electric cars are green, 
But of course they aren't really because you have to make the electricity. And now in North Dakota, they're pushing electric cars very vigorously because what they really want to sell is coal and their power plants run on coal. So increasing consumption of electricity lets them sell more coal. And it's not green at all. <laughs> anyway, um, you lost part of your TV service. I know the strange thing to me is Comcast went down completely. Not only my internet, but also my cell phone, which connects to Comcast. And that, that the eight, my, my landlord's Sonic stayed up. So it really was just the company Comcast. It wasn't some kind of larger outage like the trees knocking down the power lines or something, which is what I thought it might be. Yeah, it did seem to be just a specific problem inside Comcast. I wonder if we'll ever find out what happened. So you remember uh, William Shatner took this flight up to space a while ago. It was just the, the crazy one where you just don't even really get to space. You just sort of get high in the atmosphere and you're only there for like 10 minutes. And uh, that experience sounds like not much of anything to me. He's now, it's, it costs you half a million dollars to make that trip. And they've got 700 people on the waiting list. So much that they are, Virgin Galactic is investing in more spaceships and stuff to do this. Even that, which seems to me like a pretty lame outing, you go up to like the upper atmosphere for like 10 minutes. <laughs> that is a huge hit. So, uh, this is another thing Scott Gallery says, which I agree with, which is this kind of space tourism is a ridiculous business. It'll never pay for itself. It will follow, follow, this doesn't make any sense. What makes sense is space hauling, transmitting equipment up to like the International Space Station or something. Now that's a business, like being the UPS of space. That's a business which I think SpaceX is getting into, and that is a monetary successful business where you might reasonably make enough money to pay for the costs. This space tourism thing seems like a temporary fad that isn't really going to make enough money to justify its enormous cost. Anyway, um, that's enough uh, of this. It's time for the official class stuff, so I'll stop this.